And I found that footers can also be presented with a, a case of transient hyperammonemia. It has a wide variation of symptomatology. It can be very mild, can pass unnoticed, and it can be very severe, presented with disturbed conscious level convulsions, and some patients even in the case reports needed peritoneal dialysis for the hyperammonemia. And these are the case reports. So, and you can also see if this patient has a hypoxic insult, liver abnormality, slow birth weight, and if the patient is IUGR. So, here we solve three, our initial three problems. But the patient, the, the patient's septic condition improved, then the ammonia levels decreased dramatically. There were also a neurological improvement which was seen in the tone and the conscious levels and no more uh, GTT were ever uh, noted. And the patient was weak from the nasal CPAP with breath of stress conditions and the feeding was gradually increased. After this, we noticed that the suckling reflex of the patient didn't uh, improve uh, quite as we had hoped. And that there were persistent ruling of saliva and failure of trials of oral feeding. Upon reaching 200 mL per kg and feeding, the patient experienced two attacks of aspiration, upon which he was intubated and ventilated on an SIN pressure control. And this was the X-ray with an upper lower uh, collapse. So these are the emerging problems. Failure of oral intake and the current attacks of aspiration. So, a lot of us are uh, presented with similar cases which are presented with swallowing disorders in the new world. Actually, when I uh, searched for this problem uh, uh, on the internet uh, about this in the literature, uh, the swallowing problems are all, يعني, كتير منها بتبقى على الأدس, especially عند الأدس اللي هما post-stroke, اللي هما بيجي لهم over range of the لكن على الشيلد وعلى especially new mates very deficient literature واللي يعني studies قليلة جدا هي اللي اتعملت في الموضوع ده فاحنا ممكن بس نبتدي نقول على حاجة حاجات بسيطة كده يعني احاول سمرايز الموضوع ان 25 ل 45% of normally developed children عندهم swallowing problem و30 ل 80% منهم بيبقى عندهم developmental disorders وهاير انسيدنس طبعا بتبقى موجوده مع بيتر يونيتس ومع اللو بيرث ويت. طيب عشان نفهم الموضوع احنا فور ا بيشنت او ا بيبي تو ديفلوب سوالف بروبرلي لازم انيشلي يبقى الاناتومي بتاعي بروبر من اول البون ستراكشر مع الماسلز بتاعتي ومفروض يبقى في كوردينيشن بين ده. المفروض كمان يبقى ان السنترال نيرف سيستم مع البرين ستيم اوكي اللي هي بيبقى فيها الكرينيال نيرف نيوكلي اللي هي كلها بتبقى ريليتد هي اللي بتعمل انيشيتد فولوينج ريفلكس لازم كلها تبقى انتاكت اوكي ولا تشوف ولازم يبقى في كوردينيشن ما بينهم ما بين السنسوري برين برين نيوكلي بتاع الكرينيال نيرف عشان هي اللي هتبتدي تقول لي ان انا عندي بولس اوف فور موجود في الماوس وان اي نيد تو ستارت اند بروفيلت عشان اوصل بيها للاصابه. سو حاجات كده يعني معلومات ان الفرنجال سوالوينج اصلا بتبتدي عند 12 تو 12 ويكس اوف جيستيشن. السكري بيبتدي عند 18 تو 24 ويكس اوف جيستيشن. السوالوينج افشنتلي بيبقى اتشيفد عند 34 تو 36 ويكس. But further maturation بيحصل بعد البرد. طيب يبقى لازم انا عندي بقى في انتجريشن بين الريسبيراتري سيستم الجي اي تي مع الكارديو فاسكولار سيستم واول مع النيرف سيستم لازم يبقى في جود مايليشن وجود ماتشوريشن عشان يبقى السولنج فورس بتاعي يبقى احسن ويبقى ماتشور. طيب ده بيحصل زي ايه؟ زي ما هو الطفل بيحصل له ديفلوبمنت في الجروث موتور والفاين موتور اللي احنا كلنا عارفينها اوكي يعني هو في الاول خالص الولد بيبقى بيبتدي يحصل له هيد كنترول كمان الموضوع ده بيبقى ريفلكتد في السوالو يعني في الانيشال بيبقى العيان بيتعرض لليكويدز 
ويبتدي ان هو يديفلوب سامبلينج بتاعه يبقى هو ماشور واز الفود اللي هو بيبقى بريزنتد بيها بيبقى تشينج ذا كونسستنسي هكذا بيحصل مور ماتيوريشن للسوالف بتاعه طيب هل هو بس ماسلز؟ لا الجو كمان بتبتدي تتاثر يعني العقل بيمد بنفس الحركه بتاعته بيحصل فيها ماتيوريشن مع الكم ومع اللبس فكل دول لازم يبقى انتجريتد توجذر عشان السوالف بتاعته يبقى احسن Okay, so we'll talk about the causes rapidly. We have anatomical causes, we have genetic causes, and neurological affection with inborn errors of metabolism and muscular affection. We all we need to figure of coordination. Anatomical causes, cleft lip and tracheoesophageal stricture. This was not present in our patient. Okay, uh, genetic causes that uh, as the Down syndrome, Kabuki syndrome, and other syndromes. Okay. Uh, neurological affection, okay. Uh, wide range like hypoxic insult, a CNS infection, traumatic brain injury, and this was all the, uh, we all repeated the transcranial, the MRI of the brain, and EEG, and this was all normal in our patients. Important errors of metabolism can cause the same in coordination, especially the urea cycle, the effect organic acidemia, mitochondrial cytopathy, fatty acid oxidation, peroxisomal infection, and glycogen storage disease, and we repeated all our Uh, metabolic uh, profile and they were all normal. Muscular affection can also affect like the transient pharyngeal muscle dysfunction, spinal muscle atrophy and infections. CPK was normal and there was no other positive stuff in our patient. Systemic diseases, prematurity, low birth weight were all, can also be an etiology. Right. To diagnose this, we have to be, do two parts. Non-instrumental is like taking the history, uh, good history of the patient, and we have to do good general examination for all the uh, possible causes that we already stated, okay? And then there are many neonatal oral motor assessment scales that are present, but not one of them uh, can determine if my patient really has any coordination or not. At the end, there is an instrument, instrumental evaluation, the video cross-topic swallowing study, and the fiber optic endoscopic evaluation of swallowing. Okay. We did for our patient, okay, the video uh, and fiber optic study, which is the range of photography, and it really showed that the patient had palette pharyngeal in coordination. So we started to treat the patient, okay. We started to be food thickeners. We started uh, using the nasogastric tube, okay, more positioning and oral motor exercises. And at the end, we will need a surgical intervention. Okay, we did all this, but the patient didn't improve. He had persistent aspirations. Uh, can this just be for the incoordination? Well, no. There should be another cause and we should search for it. And it uh, was evident when we did the laryngeal pathology. And there was an evident S-shaped fistula, okay, for the patient, uh, which is seven millimeters wide, which is quite big. And which is, cause, which is causing the uh, persistent aspiration of the patient. Uh, as shaped fistula is uh, the fourth uh, common type, fourth common type of the tracheostrogen fistula. It really is presented later in life, but it is presented in the urethra, especially if we start the oral feeding and the patient develops cyanosis and uh, recurrent aspirations. It can be diagnosed by Uh, conscious studies and the uh, uh, endoscopic studies, but the best is, do, uh, is done intraoperatively with a guide wire, and treatment at the end of the day is surgery. Thank you. And now the second case by Dr. Obama
But head count. A patient with spirit lost kidney present with polyhydramnus, and usually a, a, a patient with antenatal outer kidney problem may present with a polyhydramnus. But the antenatal ultrasound done after one month sold with the problem. It shows a double public sign, which is really of degenerative atrium with polyhydramnus. The patient was admitted to the NICU with a preoperative work of done. Bilby abdominal ultrasound, echo from spinal ultrasound, and x ray abdomen, which is a double bubble sign, and CBC, CRP negative, with normal liver and kidney function. The patient was operated at day two of life for the angular pancreas and venous atresia with dildenostomy and colostomy, which means that the double bubble sign can present with a, as a case of poor angular pancreas or dildenal atresia. Five days post-operative feeding was started on 20 cc per kg. The patient started to develop abdominal distension and feeding the tumors. With the abdominal ultrasound was done, and the patient had hematosis in the stylaris, thickening of the wall of the intestine, which is of NEC. But can NEC present in a preterm at day 7 of life very early and after introduction of only 20 cc per kg? We searched up in the literature to found a similar case report as our case which is the case of angular pancreas whose post-operative course was complicated with the development of NEC. We found that in post-operative uh, either cardiac surgery or abdominal surgery, NEC can develop early at the earlier age in a preterm. And so awareness of an, an NEC as a potential post-operative complication may help a heavier condition and time. The patient starts on the regimen for the NEC. The patient kept the NPO up and right, but the patient starts to develop poor perfusion and metabolic acidosis, bad work of breathing, fluid resuscitation was done in the tropic support to add ventilated up to high frequency ventilation. The patient remained in NPO for 20 days on CPA. Lab showing sepsis. Platelet count surface read, CRP is debated, blood culture serum candida, central line showing step coagulation. Antibiotic was changed according to the culture, antifungal was added, and the patient received plasma plated back to RPCs for the management of sepsis. Now, the patient sepsis improved, the patient is extirpated, and off cortic and respiratory support feeding started and increased gradually until reaching full oral intake. The patient was started at day 48 of life to come for follow up after 48 days. The only abnormality was found on, on the discharge was that the total bilirubin started to to be made to show a, a case of conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, total bilirubin 5 with direct bilirubin 3. <coughs> the mystery of the iron color in HOA, the animatis, the viral sepsis with high frequency, when the HOA can post operative monet, uh, <laughs> with current HOA EV, vitally stable, crying, feeling well, but with a case of conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, jaundice with same color too. Lab was done. And the patient showed bilirubin syntoxin increasing up to 22 in following and in follow up lab. A case of neonatal polystates. Do it with this extra hepatic cause, mainly the atresia of the lupus cyst, or an intra hepatic cause, allergic syndrome, or hepatocellular infection, or the TBN infused. We start to do a workup for the patient. Lab show alkaline phosphatase and gamma GT3000, baby abdominal ultrasound. Not suggestion of biliary atresia, only the case has uh, the patient has biliary mouth with distended gold uh, blood. Maybe it's a CMV infection because the patient received blood transfusion, but the CMV PCR is negative, hepatitis marker negative. Maybe it is syndromatic, but the carry carping is normal. Maybe hypothyroidism, but it's normal. What is the diagnosis? What is the cause of the neonatal cholestasis? We decide to do further investigation. We have either to do MRI or MRCP or to enter again under the surgeon now. Intraoperative cholangiography was done with showing only biliary mud and gallstone and obstruction of the vessel profile and after injection of the dye, release of the obstruction and cholecystectomy was done. And only intraoperative we found that there is biliary mud, no other uh, find. And after injection of dye, it is uh, improved. The patient started to improve dramatically after intraoperative cholangiography and presented with no jaundice and the stool started to color and the CRP negative CBC good and total periodic start to decrease, decreasing back to five. Can be it is a TPN induced cholestasis. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
What is with CP and induced cholestasis? The patient is a preterm in sepsis, doing the abdominal surgery, developing neck, long duration of TPN up to 35 days, high level content, and then the abdominal ultrasound showing nothing of the surgical causes of neonatal cholestasis, improvement after only release of obstruction. What is against? We don't. We usually know that TPN cholestasis presenting with uh, improved, but when the patient start to enter, start intral feeding, but actually our patient is in peliopic start to increase when the patient is off TPN and after starting uh, uh, oral feeding and usually feed during the administration of TPN. We looking up in the literature, we found that two thirds of the patient, our infant, experience arise in the serum peliopin following parenteral C-session. After TPN, feed to retain the ayanin at high risk and they develop TPN cholestasis. Uh, about the TPN cholestasis. TPN induced cholestasis feed different terminology, either intestinal failure associated liver disease, parental nutrition associated liver disease. The pathology may be from cholestasis uh, up to bad duct proliferation, go for cell hyperplasia, up to cirrhosis and fibrosis. Risk factor in Kalkullah Mahmouda for Ayan and sepsis and prematurity in the bacterial overgrowth, no amal abdominal surgery, or after of Tuila MPO. Increased intra-tumor uh, vatic circulation and intral feeding with high level content, phytosterols with level that can add a particular risk factor to the TPN induced. Here, the paper is here in the Mahmoud and the liver biopsy, which is significant for the evaluation of TPN induced, where in the PK separate, the IEN can show us no TPN induced cholestasis, who can show us with MRI and MRS beam at the Lausch Hagen, who will enter the IEN to 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 the IEN. Geography, now we have a good option to execute the memory and feeling of the diagnosis. We have a different classification according to how it has worked in the patient to deliver the design of the human element of the data. We have the end of the article, the end of the level, and we have the small level, bigger than the intro level. Type 2, and we have the screen, and up to, and we have the name of the liver transplantation. Thank you. And the last presenter, Dr. Taisir Mustafa, who present the last case. Of different sizes and shape. 
following up labs can do much. It's your bad and the CRT increase the 29.5 in normal range can less than 6 in human brain related to chemo calcium in the genetic antigen can slide but not significant to increase to up to 18 can 40 levels and the idea is that the patient translates from had level up to 18 and some references between the normal and the normal up to 50 and the few one case report that the normal up to 18 can go up to 270 and then we have the radiological investigation in echo can feel the DOA is even significant Transcranial ultrasound can be proven. Most natal human be abdominal ultrasound showed cystic avascular bleeding with ecogenic content, occupying the upper abdomen, displacing the liver and right kidney naturally, extending to the left area costa, with that and the diagnosis of antenatal ultrasound fitness in fetu, or bilateral high disease, or no moderate renal bed with diameter acts, antenatal bed with abdominal ultrasound, and you can see in the right renal bed with diameter can be fully tuneless, with that fetus in fetu, diameter small. CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis with contrast to the the next day showing large right hypochondriac encapsulated mass lesion likely to bacteria in origin, pushing the right kidney inferiorly and the liver anteriorly in the scalp and posterior surface of the liver. The mass is well encapsulated, measuring 8.8 .8 by 6 by 11.5 cm, with soft tissue, mixed fat, and bone inside. A bone should need complete skeleton suggesting the upper to bacteria fetus in fetal or teratoma as a cause. The baby was operated on 17 July 2019. Uh, the most important points in the operative details we found is The most important points for operative details huge stack filled uh, with fluid and hard structures which are rising from the retroperitoneal area with blood vessels and branches from the aorta and the fluid and the cavity supplying the sac. While dissecting the sac with Sura Tanya, it was ruptured, it said it was ruptured, evacuating about 200 ml of yellowish fluid from inside. With rupture of the sac, dissecting of the mass from the surrounding was easier. Ligation of the blood vessels, total excision of the mass, mustasis of the intervening area, bacteria, the body with distilled water, and then sent the mass for fluid aspirin aspir for pathological examination. In this pathological examination, and we check the face part of the life. The next the pathological examination and heart CDP, send the irregular skin cover the tissue mass, weighting 110 grams, forming of five fluids, length is measuring 9 by 6 by 5 centimeter, with attached short the cord like structure 3 centimeter long and 0.3 centimeter in diameter. Cut section was firm, gray, white, and soft, yellow, thin tissue in tiny and hard bony to solid. Psychological examination, a pathological examination, psychological examination of the set block and the fat is prepared from the centrifuge of the fluid received, revealed the numerous heat cells and moderate number of superficial spin cells, diagnosed and abdominal mass and the fluid aspirin to feed this in heat. Most of the problems in the video was NDO for three days and feeding started after passage of the school. CRP persistently increased with negative and culture, so changing with antibiotics until CRP became normal. The patient was discharged after 52 days of admission and 43 days of operation. The patient was followed up with ultrasound and alcohol protein and had no problems. Fetus in fetu is a developmental abnormality in which a mass of the tissue resembling a fetus comes inside the body. Fetus in fetu is estimated to occur okay, 1 in 500,000 live birth. 95 cases only were published since uh, 1999. Early example of the phenomenon is described by George William Young. There is of development. There are two main theories about the developmental fetus in fetus. The first theory is teratoma theory. Fetus in fetus may be a very highly differentiated form of the moid cell. But the moid cell itself a highly differentiated form of material teratoma. The second theory is parasitic twin theory. Fetus in fetus may be a parasitic twin fetus growing within its host twin. Very early in a monozygotic twin pregnancy, in which both fetus will share common placenta, one fetus thrives around and ends with the others. The end of twin becomes a parasite in, it, in that the survival depends on the survival of the host twin by growing on the host twin blood supply. Fetus in fetus is a malformed parasitic twin included in the host twin due to an equal division of its potent cells of the blastocyst, resulting in the inclusion of a smooth cellular mass in the bone mature and very thus forming a monozygotic dye and native twin pregnancy. More explanation there is of developmental parasitic twin theory in terms of physical maturation. 
or case of fetus in fetus present critical defects such as the functional brain, heart, lung, gas, and spinal defect, or urinary defect. According to why a fetus in fetus can share select morphological features with a normal fetus, it has no prospect of any life outside the host twin. Moreover, it poses a clear threat to the life of the host twin and from its own life demands. Clinical presentation. The condition usually presents in infancy and childhood, presented before the age of the 18 months, and the only three cases reported after the age of the 15 years. But in one case report, 50 years old, the main patient is diagnosed to be or will be as and to the unit that one is present. This is the oldest patient reported with fetus in fetus. Fetus in fetus presented as a lump in the lump in the abdomen, and the little bretonnial space is a family site. Other rare sites include single oxygen and intracranial fluorescence. Single parasitic fetus is the commonest presentation. Multiple fetus is ranging from 2 and 5 can also be reported. Maximum number of the fetus in fetus documented was 11. The organs demonstrated are mainly spine, the most common organ in 91%, then limbus, CNS, gastrointestinal uh, uh, tract, visits, and lost lesion to urinary tract in 26.5% uh, cases respectively. Although fetus in fetus is a benign condition, the mass may compress the surrounding organs and tissue. Therefore, symptoms of the fetus in fetus are primarily due to its mass effects, such as abdominal distension, feeling difficulty, MS jaundice, or pressure effects on the renal or respiratory system. Diagnosis. Some authors claim that fetus in fetus is a well differentiated high organized teratoma, while others claim it to be a different pathological entity. To qualify as a, as a fetus in fetus, one of the following characteristics must be present. A mass enclosed with a distinct sac, partially or completely covered by skin, grossly recognizable anatomical features, and attached to the host by the bridges containing a few relatively large blood vessels. Fetus in fetus occurs in the upper peritoneum, teratoma occurs in the lower peritoneum, brain disovery and secret oxygen lesion. Malignant transformation is rare in fetus in fetus, but in the teratoma have more than 10% malignant rate. Presence of the vertebral column is an important diagnostic criterion, but an unclassified vertebral column invisible on the rated black or on CT scan, or its total absence in 9% doesn't exclude diagnosis of fetus in fetus. Presence of the body vertebral axis with appropriate limb arrangement on gross is an important diagnostic feature, thus confirming the diagnosis of the fetus in fetus. Other differentiating features include normal level of the alpha fetal routine, new diagnostic modality molecular analysis using an informed genetic marker for the parental, isolation of chromosomes 14 and 15. If it shows no genetic difference between the host and PT4 mass, then it's a diagnostic of fetus in fetus. Differential diagnosis, infant with abdominal mass with diffuse classification or classification of alpha sonography, differential diagnosis and clone neuroblastoma, meconium synthesis, viral infections and teratoma, treatment and prognosis. Surgical incision is a treatment with the both fetal form of teratoma and fetus in fetus. In one case, reward fetus in fetus mass has been reported to cure as a exact tumor after four months. This has been attributed to the presence of the immature uh, tissues in the small areas and the remnant of the control of the mass. So total removal of the mass is a must. 97% uh, of the reported cases has a good prognosis after surgery. 27 cases didn't report on both surgical status or prognosis. In summary, fetus in vitro is considered a benign condition. Considering the risk of malignant recurrences as mentioned before, so there is need for total removal of the mass including its capsule, and considering the evaluation of the most operative tumor markers and ultrasound examination is an appropriate approach. We did it from CT scan. Yeah, I'm very
pathological specimen of the fetus in different cases, the sural awalaya, the soft tissue containing serous fluid, the sural tanya, the post operative specimen, we have two lenses, but the sural tanya, cross section part of the post operative specimen, we have intestine, we have one lens, but it's not. دي بعض الصورة انترا ابدومينال ماس انترا اوبريتيف ابدومينال ماس كان ذا كيس اوف فيتس ان فيتس بيسكلي رايت ريتر اند بلادر وفي رايت ريستيكال كان بوز انترا ابدومينال ان اوريجين. ذا سيتي سكان في مال فورمت اند مينتال سكال اند مال فورمت بريبس اند كراس كيج واور اكستريمتيز اند لور اكستريمتيز كيس اوف فيتس ان فيتس. ذا سيتي سكان في ويل لوكاليز ماس في هايبر دنس اوباستس بانديكيت ان فيتس لينس اند بيرتيبرال فور بادي اكيس اوف فيتس ان فيتس. The most obvious specimen in the case of fetus in fetus, we have put for that to a single chamber heart to the drip. The, the last picture part of the case of fetus in fetus, we had it.